What's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new Sweet Film Podcast. Of course, my name is Zach. And my name is Cody. And today we have a very special podcast today. We don't have like one central topic, but we're going to take it back to basics. We're just going to be having a big discussion about film. Different discussion, different topics. If you guys don't like what we're talking about, skip through the video. If you guys want to listen to us, lovely voices talk about something, maybe rant. Sometimes we go off on tangents. That's the best thing about this podcast if you're new here. So, Cody... Everyone knows how we start. If you're if they're new here, they don't. But I just like to catch up. How's your day going? Like, got any fun plans? Got to do anything lately? Like, yeah. Well, actually, I'll get into me in a sec. But first of all, Zach, I want to talk about you. And here's a very specific reason why. For those of you who do not know or didn't catch Zach's live stream yesterday, Zach, our little old Zach, is growing up because he's officially part of the puberty. Movie. He's a, obviously, oh no, Zach was officially put into the Phoenix film, the Phoenix film, uh, film critic society. Yes. All right. And yeah, thank you. But yeah, no, dude, that's fantastic. Like, I'm proud of you. That's great. Thanks, man. I, I was really excited because so I'd like hinted at it a couple live streams ago, but I didn't want to jinx it. I didn't really tell anyone that I had applied. I just like I told like obviously John from the website and like some of the screening reps knew but like i wanted to keep it like i didn't want to get my hopes up so i didn't like tell anyone and then i didn't get i didn't hear anything back for a month so i was like dang it so i, I sent a, a follow-up email just hey did you happen to get this blah 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 lo and behold the next day they tell me i got accepted so it, it, it's fun i don't exactly know what it'll entitle me but it's cool to have that title at least and um I get to vote. Hopefully, I'll get to vote on the awards this year. So, like, they have their own P PFCS awards, kind of like their own Oscars, yeah. which will be cool. So, if <clears> I get to <throat> vote for that, it's cool. It's on IMDb and stuff too. So, it kind of I mean, it's kind of like be... a little cool thing there. So, yeah. Plus, it'll it will give you a chance to network with more people outside of the YouTube space and actually in the professional world when it comes to yeah film. and plus it, it gives me a little bit more credibility i guess now i'm one of those stuck up snobs so when i actually <laughs> get those comments now i guess i can be like can't defend those anymore not yeah, just no. not just yeah, a boy no. in his room watching Every movies yeah you just stuff. wait everybody's gonna come at you and they're gonna be like oh who's this douchebag what does his opinion matter well apparently since i did my mary poppins trailer reaction this morning the amount of douchebag comments are already there fucking two oh. dislikes fuck you if <laughs> apologize about the cussing but f you if you really don't like my uh mary poppins trailer reaction sorry i'm a boy and crying and it's six o'clock in the morning and my stomach's upset and i'm really tired <laughs> where i'm at so People Zach, can just leave it alone. Zach's just got a whole bunch of problems going on today. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so any anything new going on with you? you like, see any movies lately? Um, I uh, saw Mandy. Dude, you need to see Mandy, man. I Yeah, I, I will. I, oh, my God. I'm not even joking. Cody, it's $5. Rent this thing and watch it. It's not all on Blu-ray yet. Is it on Vimeo or? It's on. Or... Yeah, it's on. Anything you can rent a movie on, it's on. You can oh. rent it on. Okay, I'll have to check it out then. It but is one of the best. It's top five for me this year. It is a, that good. It's total art. It's the most art house indie film I've ever seen. If you've ever seen a Nicholas Winding reference film, like say a Neon Demon or Drive, it's times 10 on that. It is Nicholas Cage unhinged, but probably gives one of the best performances of this year as well. It's so subtle and it's damn good, a good movie. And, and it's at first... When I watched it, the first hour is like a prologue to the film because you don't actually see the title card till an hour in. I was wow, like, okay, that's that's that's, that's, that's a little risky. So really, the first half it's it's written like a book. It's a prologue and sets up all the stuff that you have to know. You have to know, or else it just becomes a simplistic, weird art house film. I mean, it still is a weird art house film with a simplistic story, but that first hour is somewhat really boring but the payoff to it is so damn good that it's needed let me put it this way if you want to see nicholas cage in a chainsaw fight i mean straight up man versus man only a chainsaw and they're fighting like they're lightsabers you get it in this you want to see nicholas cage kill a demon and then grab his coke that's on glass and snort it right in front of the camera you get that 
<laughs> if you want Nicolas Cage with <laughs> blood all over him, you get that. Well, okay then. With Chainsaw and Chainsaw, I'm not going to lie. That does sound something very similar to what was in Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. But, dude, it, it, it's kind of like that, to be honest. It, is it really? Uh, yeah, no. All right. I'm going to have to find some time to check it out. But, man, uh, as far as movies go, yeah, I saw The Predator. We'll get into that. And uh, I also saw A Simple Favor, which I thoroughly enjoyed and uh, See, although and that, like, i'm so disappointed i had such a fun mo time with it the until ending the is, ending until like the last yeah, 25 minutes. and yeah, the no, film just died for me yeah I, no, okay, the last i gave i gave it a c minus and maybe i was a little bit harsh on giving it a c minus but it's hard for me to recommend a mystery movie when i felt like the ending did not succeed yeah, I can. I mean, I completely understand that. And if I was the more I think about the film, though, the more I really, really like it, because one of possibly my favorite genre in all of film is crime noir or neo noir, like a simple favor is. And I can kind of set the, the sexy noir, the end like well, yeah, shades of gray with more mystery. Well, when she's getting eaten out, man, I was like, whoa, her face. <laughs> Henry Golding, man. <laughs> Well, the dude did get to make out with two of the most beautiful men, uh, women in Hollywood. Oh, so man, I was a so little thinking, like, <laughs> no, no, no. What Ryan is Reynolds, wrong? I'm sorry. Well, he probably already knows. <laughs> no, but now taking, International Women's Day. I mean, taking the ending out, taking the if the ending was a lot better, it probably would be an A plus for me. But with the ending aside, it was. It was a B, a B plus for me. Like I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I can put the ending aside because I had so much fun watching it up until that point. And I can just treat, for me personally, I can just treat like the ending never happened. But I mean, yeah, the rest of the movie I, was... I, 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 I can get that. It's just hard. Again, it's hard for me because you go into a mystery film and you want to know the mystery ends, and the way it ends is stupid. Yeah. And I mean, Blake Light, absolutely. Can I be honest, dude? I thought it was, I thought it was predictable. I thought I, okay, I don't really? want to get in spoilers. I don't want to get in spoilers, but when you start to find out what happens midway through, um, with another character that gets introduced, I said, I knew that was happening. I knew that was going to happen the whole time. I was like that. That's just how it's going to be. I mean, that's understandable. And you know what character I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, there were some parts that were that were that were very predictable about. One thing I will say though, uh, I was watching uh, Christian Harloff's thoughts on it, and when he said that Blake Lively's performance was the Rosamund Pike for this movie, I completely agree with it because Blake really? Lively. Well, I don't think it's as good as what Rosamund Pike did, but I will say that Blake Lively's performance in this movie is the best performance she's ever given. It's I'll agree great. with that. I'll agree with that. Except the shallows. I still think that's her strongest performance. Not her strongest really? film, but I still think that's her strongest performance. She's so damn good. In the think about it. She has to, she's the only character in that film. Except for a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, get, you get what I mean. Like that's the yeah, only yeah. character in there, and I think a simple favor. She borrows a lot from Ryan Reynolds. It felt like this. I I don't know. Like it felt like she borrowed a lot from her husband. I don't know. I, I like the girl as an actress. I think she's a really good actress. I think people give her too much crap for what she is. Oh, did you get the uh, did you get the little nod and Easter egg that she actually gave her husband throughout the entirety of that movie? I don't know. So Ryan, Dude, Ryan, I zoned out. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh, the alcohol, the the alcohol? The, 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 the gin, yeah, aviation, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah by that. Ryan Reynolds. But um, yeah, as far as that. things that are going on in my life besides the whole movie thing, well, right now I'm kind of, kind of in the waiting period, and I'm just not giving my hopes up. But I might start writing for my school newspaper. That's awesome, man. It's a student-led free press for the school, and they... so it's official that you are. Uh, not yet. I sent it. I talked to her a couple of days ago, and I said, "How about this?" So I'm going to see. I'm going to see a couple movies this this weekend. I'll write a piece up, and I will send it to you over the weekend, and then you can send me your feedback. So right now, I'm just in the waiting period, but fingers crossed because I think it's a very strong piece that I sent her. Awesome. 
Awesome, hopefully, man. Well, hopefully you get will, it. That'd be, that'd be a great thing to go to. Yeah. Hopefully. I like that. I, like I that. think we should start in with what we plan on talking about. What was that? Uh, my <laughs> my dildo. It fell off. You wait. You have a dildo? Uh, somewhat. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's talk about the Predator. Uh, you saw it this weekend. I saw it last Monday, and um, so this is spoiler talk. So if you didn't see the Predator, you might want to stay away. If you don't care at all. I, I mean, really, you're not missing out on anything, to be honest. Like, anything no. we spoil won't, like, destroy. It, it's nothing like a plot twist at all. And nothing that will, like, dehance the film. It might just save you for not wanting to see the film. So And saving um, your money. Okay, let me get my preference out. First off, okay. before we get into this, Cody, I know you hated this. Yeah. Did you... Okay, is this your worst film you've seen this year? No, 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 no. I, I, my, to be honest, I know I enjoyed it when I first came out, but to be perfectly honest, my worst film is either Happy Time Murders or oh Slender Man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're gonna give it crap rating and you gave Happy Time Murders, yada, yada, yada. Dude, dude I, look, the- I enjoy, yeah, I enjoyed Happy Time Murders, but it's like I said, I saw the movie again after I saw it. So and Cody's the, the reason the- if we get a sequel, it's his fault. The more I think about the Happy Time Murders, I just kind of hate it. Shut up. Now that I've Shut seen up. it twice. Okay, we're talking about Predator. Though. As far as the Predator is concerned, it's no not spoilers. My, yet. Your normal thoughts no, on it. It's not my. It's not my least favorite film of the year. It's probably my most. As far as directing standpoint, because. I've never been the biggest fan of the Predator franchise. I think the first one is awesome. I love the first Predator movie. Everything else, though, after that, I've never been the biggest fan of. And this was more of a disappointment for me because Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, um, uh, The Nice Guys, Shane Black. After seeing The Nice Guys, Shane Black kind of pushed himself up to being one of my favorite directors. But seeing what he did in here, it was just kind of a really big letdown. Yeah, so I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Um, so th- I enjoyed the film. Is it good? No. Is it bad? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. But the film is enjoyable. It the film is enjoyable at times. It does have enjoyable I, parts. Yes, you know, it does. Some people find it to be a guilty pleasure in a sense. That's fine. But my so preference that I'm a huge Predator fan. Huge Predator fan. The first Predator is one of the first films I've ever was one of the first films I've ever saw in my life and i remember watching it for the first time my dad showed me it and he didn't tell me it was an alien he's just like oh you want to watch a war film he, he knew so we watch it and that thing scared the crap out of me when i was younger because we <laughs> used to live in uh, the forest up in big bear california yeah. and wow i mean okay. this thing was just going invisible and it was so good and this film still holds up man i just went through and rewatched every single predator film including alien versus predator and um predator 2 is a total guilty pleasure um predators with adrian brody is fun alien vs predator fun the, the second one is one of the worst films ever made yep but <laughs> this film man i i, <laughs> I know it's so it's not the worst film i've seen this year it's definitely not my top time i've seen 10 worse films than this this year would you say that it is a a disappointment it's my biggest disappointment this year the only other thing that might disappoint me more is freaking venom if venom's (laughs) worse than this i'll tell you this that's gonna be my most disappointing of this year but as of right now the predator is my most disappointing the film this year i had such high hopes just like you were saying shane black directs Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, one of the best films out there one of the most underrated films nice guys one of the most underrated films my favorite film of that year Iron Man 3, I find to be very underrated. Yep. I get it. People crap on it. I understand your reasons. As a Marvel film, it's poop. As a Shane Black film, it's amazing. This film just got... It, to be honest, though, I don't know if it was studio interference. I it, There's a whole article out there discussing the studio interference and how they changed the whole third act, how they changed a bunch of things. There's tons of things missing from the trailers. There's meddling in this movie. There is hands-down studio interference. And... For me, a lot of it, what I was reading is that the studio didn't want it to be a Shane Black film, which gives me the biggest preference. Then why the fuck did you hire him? Why the hell did you hire Shane Black to make a Predator film when you know Shane Black's going to make a Shane Black film? 
I, I, I don't get yeah. it. I don't get it. <clears throat> it, it just oh, no. the film. Hmm. Like why? Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gave it a C plus, and that was very fair of me. I easily could have given this film a D, and I didn't because I enjoyed so. Let, Cody, let's talk about our pros first, okay? Okay. I so, know you barely had any, so I'll get mine out of the way because yours is gonna be shorter. Yeah, go for it. The action in here was great. When the action is going, it's awesome. When that big predator shanking that guy multiple times, aw- awesome, awesome, groovy stuff in there. The motel scene, funniest scene in the film. The character dynamics between yeah. all the characters are great. Olivia Munn, really good. I thought she was great. A lot of people said she was miscast. I really liked her in this film. That scene where she had to take off all of her clothes and sit there and stay still, that was great. All the new... um, I like the new thing of how... uh, Just so everyone knows, now we're kind of getting the spoilers. I love how they said that the Predators are kind of trying to move into this planet. I think that's a cool thing. Because before we just thought, oh, they're using us for game. Which in a sense we are. But that's another great reason to see that... I mean, there has to be more reason to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I um, I like some of the nods to the original Predator. That was a little bit stupid to have Gary Busey's son in there and then die right off the bat. That, that was kind of stupid. But I thought the character dynamics were great. I thought all the actors did a good job. I thought Boyd Holbrook was fantastic as a lead, and I want to see him more as a lead. Jacob Tremblay surprisingly did not irritate me. I, I mean, that's not. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. I'm just saying when they do these kids subplots in these horror action films, it's not good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. usually it's annoying, but sure, I, I but didn't. Jake- I didn't fully believe his subplot with the autism. I I, I didn't no. believe not 100. percent But it worked enough for me to like it. But uh, really, I thought everyone did good. There were some funny moments, but at the same time, where the Predator should be an action horror film, this was more of an action comedy. Yep, and it shouldn't have been. No, and it shouldn't have been. And I given <clears throat> here's my thing though. Yes, it's a Shane Black movie, but even all of Shane Black's films, like the Nice Guys, I wouldn't say is a comedy. It has comedy moments, but it's more of a detective film. Same with Kiss yeah. Kiss Bang Bang. It's, it's just that film. smart, witty dialogue. It's a noir film, is yeah. what it is. It's an investigation crime film with comedic elements in it. Yeah, but so yeah. tell me your pros though, because okay, so my pros, I don't think all the performances were terrible. I'll, I'll g- give it to you there. A couple of them were, in my opinion, but uh, the ones that stood out for me number one, Keegan Michael Key, because honestly, that guy sticks out in anything that he's in, and he's just, yeah, he's just I'm pretty sure he's gonna take over Hollywood one day. Jacob Tremblay, uh, I thought he was good, not as good as he has been because Room Wonder, the, the kid is. Still have not seen Wonder. Still have not seen Wonder. I own it and I wow. still have not watched it. Well, he's phenomenal in there. I mean, Jacob Tremblay is one of those young actors that is he's up and coming and he's a talent for sure. Olivia Munn was good, which is surprising for me because she was terrible in X Men Apocalypse. <laughs> okay, and the whole well, movie me. was was terrible. That that's yeah. not her fault. That whole movie was terrible. That's true, but I mean, I also um. I enjoyed one or two of the action scenes, but at a certain point, the movie just started to bore me and the movie looked pretty. I thought the movie was shot. Really? I didn't think it, I didn't think, it, I, I didn't think it looked pretty. I thought the CGI was horrible in some parts. CGI was absolutely terrible in some parts. And uh, that, that whole last scene with the darkness, when Sterling K Brown died, I had to take a double take and be like, did he seriously just die? Like really? Yeah. You you just killed him off like that. It was it was the dumbest thing ever. But I think okay, you don't have anything else good to say, right? Nope. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about my biggest con for the film, and that's the ending. The ending's one of the worst endings I've ever seen for a film. Oh god, absolutely yes. garbage. And it, it goes to say that that I get it. You want to set up for a sequel, and the original ending was so much better. It was actually Dutch showing up, Arnold and telling them now they didn't film it because he said no to the role and i understand why i mean i think it would have been smart just to bring him back as one of the main characters i think that would have been the smarter route to do there's a couple smart routes that you should have done for this film i think um but i think that should have been one of them but we actually saw the original trailer the original ending in one of the trailers where boyd holbrook and jacob tremblay look up at the sky and he goes we're going after them 
that's where it was supposed to end. That was originally supposed to be the ending. And, they should have ended and it should have ended right there. I thought where it should have ended was right as it ended. It would have felt a little bit choppy, but it just it, it's like you because st- the next part of this film felt like it was like an add on in a sense. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it felt like just it hacked on. It. And let me if this film gets a sequel, I do not want to see that fucking thing. I do no. not want to see the Iron Man armor at the end. That was stupid. That was no. the dumbest idea you could have done. Ever. It, No, it's uh, Iron what? Man. It's a predator killer. It's stupid. You know, it. I wish it was like a different predator came out, not like a a, a suit for them. You know, I, I just it felt. I it just felt like they were trying to go the MCU route. And and this yeah. is my biggest thing. Which Jesus Christ, if Venom does this, like we're gonna have a whole podcast discussing how cinematic universes are supposed to work, and no one understands this how it is. You make a film and you just make it. Don't try to set up anything anymore. Don't. No. It doesn't work. It doesn't no. Work out. I mean, let's let's. I mean, we we could absolutely have an entire podcast talking about how movie studios today are. Oh, you know what? Cinematic Universe. They're the newest and trendiest <laughs> thing on earth. Let's let's make that Marvel. Oh money. my God, the Predator. But let's let's make this Gary Busey's sons in here. So apparently, you know, by Peter oh, Keys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, going, fuck you times, you don't know what we're talking about how many times has it worked i would say possibly two because the only other one that has for the most part it's kind of 50 50 worked for me has been the conjuring universe that i mean but they did it right they yeah. just started making them it I never mean, was planned I mean, is the Conjuring universe great? No, it's about as far as the films are concerned. It's about fifty. I'd say three. Out, I'd say three out of five are great. Yeah, absolutely. But they did it right. It, it doesn't feel like they took the whole idea of Carl being off of Marvel because the fact of the matter is, even though Marvel was doing it, the Conjuring, you know, the way the Conjuring franchise started out, it did its own thing. Was Annabelle a terrible movie? Yes, absolutely. But it definitely felt like they were at least trying to set up something in a worthy yeah, way. And I'll go as far as to say this. I think the first Annabelle is better structured than this movie. Did I enjoy this one more? Absolutely. But as a structured film, the first Annabelle did better than the Predator. And oh, yeah. Then let's. You know what? I think a good comparison with this for me is The Mummy last year. Yeah. The way they try to set up a cinematic universe, shoving this stuff down your throat without anybody in the audience wanting it and trying to set up a sequel or a different universe or what well, and that's the you. thing is so this film didn't shove it down your throat till the end. And it just felt so abrupt at that ending. I felt like you could have ended it more. And I think one of the big issues with this film is one, you don't believe that the loonies really why should they follow Boyd Holbrook? What's the point? I think uh, they should have just all been a squad in the beginning. And if they weren't, you know what I mean? Like it just, yeah. I never believed that. Why would they follow this guy? Like, I feel like they should have been a squad in the beginning. And then they all get decontained because they all saw the predator. And then it goes from there. It would have made the film a little bit more faster paced. And I, I feel like you should have focused on only a couple of their characters instead of going through each and every one of them. Like, Okay, there's one other thing. A lot of people are having issues with Thomas Jane. What did you think of the Tourette's thing? What do you think? I didn't hate it. I thought I'm I, I messed up, mm-hmm. so I thought it was funny. <clears throat> I mean, I thought it I was I thought it was funny in some parts. For the most part, though, I thought it was okay, but that's mostly because at a certain movie this this film started to annoy me because Did it feel like a Shane Black film to you though? Like it, at times it did partially, I couldn't tell if it was just butchered from the studio or like, I I don't know. Like, I I guess the biggest disappointment for me or one of the bigger disappointments is number one, the script, the script was a very big disappointment. And the fact that someone who was in the original predator movie, yeah decides to direct a predator movie and it's almost completely terrible 
That's but, one of the bigger disappointments for me. This film feels like it should have came out in the 1980s. To be honest, it yes. feels like it has the score going from the original Predator. Mm-hmm. And again, I mean, one of the big cons to this film for me is just the Predator. You kill off the main Predator so early, and focus on these dogs, which is dumb. They don't do anything. They make one retarded, and then oh, well, I'm going to be a real dog now. Made no sense. The elite no. predator was cool for what it was. We didn't get enough of him though. And I remember seeing on set there were supposed to be two other normal predators, which going into the reshoots they actually got rid of all those. Of Stupid. course they did. Stupid. Stupid. Just dumb. And there's a lot of dumb decisions in this film. Again, I enjoyed it. it it's probably, to be honest, as a predator film. Hmm. It's probably the closest in tone to the original. Yeah. But at the I same suppose. time, not being good. I don't know. There's things wrong with it. There's things that are good with it. If they go with the sequel, I won't. It just depends where they take it. But I don't think they will. I, I think this film's getting destroyed. Mm. Um, it's made money somewhat, but I don't think it'll make enough to recuperate. I, honestly, I think it'll break even, but it won't make enough to do a sequel. Honestly, between... I don't think it's as bad as AVP Requiem. Definitely not. But I mean, it's right up there. No, with... I for me, I put it as the third best. I think it's the third best or worst, whatever you want to talk about it. I mean, I'd say it's probably tied for me with with Predator Two because Predator Two. I can understand why people would think that's a guilty pleasure. This film, I, I, I can under. I mean, I can understand why people would think this is a guilty pleasure, but it doesn't change the fact that both Predator Two. And The Predator are both really poorly constructed movies. Yeah, I agree with you. It, it's just... It's disappointing. And, and I mean, you look at... Th- I know there have been a few fun films and a few really good films to come out this year, but honestly, this year, is, in terms of movies this year, has been kind of disappointing for me. Because, I mean, there have been a few movies that have surprised me that have been excellent, but there hasn't been a lot of movies to where I've gotten out of the movie theater. And I'm like, I want to go see that again. Yeah. Except happy time murders, right? No. Well, yes, that, you saw I, it twice. well, you know, the reason why I saw it because you Griffin, John and everybody else convinced me to go see it again. And granted you guys were all right. The movie is terrible. Uh-huh. I think the only movie that I am actually considering to see twice now, I mean, Avengers Infinity War was definitely one, Mission Impossible Fallout for sure. There's been a few. The latest one was a simple favor. Oh I'm probably going to. I'm probably going to go. Look, you're allowed to have your opinion. I understand why you hate the movie. I understand if the ending turns people off of the movie, I understand. Me personally, I love investigation noir type films like a simple favor. And I think there is more that I can get out of it if I see it a second all time. Right. I all really right. enjoyed that. All, all right, all right, all right, all right. Fair, 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 fair enough. So I think we're going to move off the Predator now. Uh, very right, disappointing okay. overall. Very disappointing for me. But uh, yeah. a new trailer popped up today, which one I put this up, it'll be a couple days from now. But uh, <sighs> Mary Poppins, trailer number two comes out. Now, let me preference this. I love the original Mary Poppins. I could not yep. have cared less when they announced the new Mary Poppins. I said, that's just a cash grab, blah, blah, blah. I mean, every film's a cash grab in Hollywood. But I was like, you really, really? We're going to go back there? Okay, Emily Blunt, perfect. Per- perfect. Perfect as casting. Especially after I saw A Quiet Place, I was like, she is, well, let me say this, perfect in the role. Because in, <laughs> Quiet, Place, in a Quiet Place, when she was teaching her son, I was like, that's Mary Poppins. I, I That was the first time I saw it. Mm-hmm. And let me say this. I loved this trailer. It is one of my most anticipated films of this year now. And maybe it's just because I'm a Disney 2D animation kind of freak. And I love when Disney goes back to these. And I didn't expect for them to do it. I did not expect for them to go back to that route. But it looks stunning. Stunning, magical, whimsical, charming, spectacular, amazing, fantastic, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> you're, no, you're right. I think you and I both have these same. <laughs> I, think, I think we both have the same opinion on this darn thing. Yeah. I mean, 
I mean, I I saw it this morning. I didn't even know it dropped, but you told me to watch it before we well, started. Well, that's why. This that's up. why. So I was gonna yeah. put, I was gonna push the podcast up more because I thought yeah. it was coming out at eight. So I wanted to do a trailer reaction, but then it dropped earlier. So then I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna get up right now and get this okay. done. But yeah, I mean, I saw your trailer reaction for it after I watched it. At, we pretty much had the same dumbfounded expression on our faces. As I'm sure you saw the there was about the halfway point when that 2D animation was just came out. There was a smile on my face from the beginning to er, all the way from to that the point end. all the way to the end. Yeah, she fits the role. I mean, nothing will ever get rid of it. It's Emma Thompson, right? Emma Tom Emma Thompson. Uh, Emily Blunt. Em no, 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 the no, original. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know uh, and it. oh oh the one thing i didn't know because i didn't know they were going to do this dick van dyke is yeah you didn't back. know he was in it you didn't know he no, was in it yeah i, 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 I forgot I Mary was in it. that was the character i forgot that was in there I mean, she'll probably I get nominated know. she'll probably get nominated for an oscar for that role but i mean i'm not exactly sure if he's going to be playing bert in mm -hmm. mary I, poppins no, returns isn't that uh Lynn Mo uh Lynn Manuel Miranda? Isn't he playing Bert in I'm not hundred percent. I don't okay. know much about this film, but I'm gonna say this right now. If this film is really good, I mean really good, it's coming on around Oscar season. Guarantee it'll get nominated for Best Picture if it's really good. Guarantee yeah, it. And, and I'll go as far as say Emily Bolt will be nominated. More than likely. Although I think I can hear Odie. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they, I mean, if this film is excellent, th there is, without a doubt, it will be in top three for me. Maybe even top two. Because Mary Poppins is... Mary Poppins is in my top five favorite Disney films of all time. Really? It's not that high for me. And, but I and enjoy saving, it. And Saving Mr. Banks to go along with that. Saving Mr. Banks that came out a few Underrated years movie. ago. That, it, that film is is brilliant but to see what they're doing with mary poppins here with mary poppins returns it's it's just exciting and i'm like with you i was very skeptical before this before watching this trailer of anything related to mary poppins returns besides of course emily blunt because she's phenomenal but with this trailer out stole your heart right it, yeah, it's still my heart, and it's right. It's right up there with Bohemian Rhapsody as my most anticipated film of this year. Bohemian Rhapsody, I can't wait. I got my screening invite, and I'm like, <gasps> nice. And I'm actually seeing it the day that they're premiering at the world premiere. Really? So I that it's one or two things. One, they want everyone to see it at once because it's that damn good. Or two, it's not that good. But I, from what I've heard, it's amazing. I, I know someone who got to see one of those early, early, early things and said it was awesome said it was awesome so i i can't wait for that film man and with mary poppins being over we got a new film that's coming out later next year which is uh the joker yes todd phillips directs this film and walking phoenix was casted as the joker which he lost a lot of damn weight yes he certainly did if you had seen you were really never here earlier this year the guy was big and he's like as skinny as me now like he, wait, it's so scary is it kind of like christian bale what the kind of way he was in uh american hustle and then what he was the kind of way he was in when it comes to hostiles yeah in a sense uh i i have been man he's he's really good i i mean walking phoenix is for me i think the best working actor in hollywood today i think yeah, he's the best working actor her is my favorite performance the guy's ever given though yeah, no, that's excellent. I, I completely agree. Walk the Line was one of my favorite performances that he's ever given. Yeah, that's um, a really good one, too. Also, oh, have you seen have you seen the poster? Uh, somebody posted it on social media, but it was like... Logic, the fan art. Yeah, where it's like, don't forget to, and then it shows him with like red lipstick and green. Yeah, hair. I'm curious to see if we do get that. So, obviously, in this first photo that Todd Phillips posted, his name is Al Alfred Fleck. Now, I don't know if it's a playoff... Uh, Affleck? I, I don't know. Affleck. Ben Affleck. Well, I meant Ben Affleck. Yeah. Oh, fucking. <laughs> I want to smack you because that's the first thing you thought of. How dare you disrespect the Affleck? Well, you said Affleck, not Affleck. I hate you. But you get what I mean. So <laughs> yeah, no, I do, I do. Because that's not Joker's real name in the comics. So I don't no. know if it's just an alias for right now, or obviously this is a one-off. So this is like completely different. I'm not expecting for it to be comic accurate or anything but man seeing him smile seeing him can smile I, can i say something though i will be very disappointed if he doesn't become the joker until right at the end 
I'll be very disappointed. Well, I I guess the That's take that I have on it is if if he becomes the Joker that we know with like makeup and all that stuff by the end, I'm not going to care so much as long as his personality is like the Joker at some point in the movie, like from some point on. But it looks like we're already starting to get that because the little, not only the photos, but the video. The videos, that's, yeah. That I think the you you retweeted. I, I can't remember who posted I it, but it. Yeah, I mean, just just seeing that one little scene that that he did the guy's mannerisms the way he smiled all of that i i cannot wait for this movie to come out yeah it, it looks insane dude i i'm i'm really excited for it for a couple of reasons and one of them being it's walking phoenix um yeah. i think if this film is brilliant and great then um we're gonna get something where it comes around october next year that's oscar season so yeah I'm excited for it. I'm still skeptical on it because, okay, I love Todd Phillips. I think he's a good director. War Dogs was criminally <laughs> underrated. But he's not... I don't know. I, I Scorsese's producing it, but I'm still iffy on that part. I, I, I love yeah. Todd Phillips, but not all the hangover, hangover films were great. Um, I enjoyed them all because it's more of a guilty pleasure, but I, I'm just curious to see what he can do. I, I, I think after seeing War Dogs, it gives me a little bit more hope, but I can't wait. He looks great, though. He looks great. Completely and, agree. And I was saying this because a lot of people are saying, oh, John Hamm, fan casting him as Batman. Let me preference this. If this one-off works, I don't want John Hamm taking over Ben Affleck's place. I'd rather them get someone younger for Ben Affleck since he is – gone you know what i mean well yeah. gone that, that's all the rumor he's not coming back i mean i think i, would, I think john ham would if be a they, great batman but that's what i'm saying if the one-offs yeah. work i want him to be i want them to do a batman one-off with john yeah Hamm. imagine if they actually do take the dark knight returns comic because yeah we got a small iteration of it in batman v oh, Superman, but i mean yeah. legit take it source material and all and have john ham be that grizzled old batman you, you get know what? Harry Kelly, you get a uh, different Superman, like this whole different one off. And I think it would work. I think it would work and it'd be cool. And I, I want to see more films like this go in that route because yeah, it's cool to have a universe, but honestly it's not working for DC and we'll get into that in a yeah. second when we talk about Henry Cavill, but I mean, uh, this is hysterical. Like I know this would, this would never happen, but what if he teamed up one off with John Hamm playing, John Hamm playing um Batman. Batman and then oh what what's his gosh I, I can't even I can't think this morning. Who was the kid who was in uh Baby Driver? Ansel Elgort. Yeah, what if we had Ansel Elgort as as Nightwing or Robin and then John Hamm as Batman? <laughs> well Robin in, in that comic is a girl. It's a girl. I didn't know that. Because I've you never read The Dark Knight Returns. Well, yeah, it's something you need to get onto. Yeah, it's a girl. It's the first girl, Robin. Okay. It's very different. So it takes place like 40 years into his career. He's retired and everything. Like the city's going to crap. And yeah. uh, pretty much him and Superman face off. But like he comes out of retirement and literally, you know, how he doesn't kill. Yeah. No, he's like slitting people's throats. Like slitting, <laughs> wow. like stabbing, like killing the Joker gets out of jail. Like there's a Joker thing. It, like it, it is awesome. It's awesome. It's one of the best comic books. There's an animated version of it too, that you can buy. And it's one of the best animated films DC's put out, but it's really good. I, I cannot express that, how good that film is, but, uh, or that film and the comic book are, it's my favorite comic book of all time. But I will say cool. one last point that I'll put on when it comes to, when it comes to the Joker film is the more I hear about it, the more I get excited because something tells me like this is just intuition, but something tells me that the Joker movie will be the first rated R comic book movie that the DC universe has done. Not the streaming service. Oh, no, they've already said it's rated R. They've already said it's rated R. Well, I will. Well, that's my point. I am not surprised by that fact. However, I will say it's probably I'm thinking it's probably going to be the first rated R comic book film that they do. And just on a side note, one person I'm glad that they added on is Mark Marin, the guy who plays yeah. the uh, the. Because the, honestly, I just got I 
I just finished watching season two of Glow probably a month ago, and I I can't speak enough praises of that show because you're the one who suggested it to me, and I agree. It's a phenomenal show, and Mark Maron is one of my favorite parts of the show. Yeah, no. So, yeah, him, Zazzy Beats, Robert De Niro are in it right now. Alec Baldwin was on, but they uh, got rid of him. So I I guess there's more to go into that. Um, Obviously, we don't know much details. Uh, We'll probably see a trailer in, like, probably next March or so yeah. we'll get a trailer finally then, but, but we uh, have sad news. Yeah. We are talking the DCU and that is Henry Cavill is leaving the DCU. Well, that BS statement that Warner brothers pulls out and it just really all shows me that I, <sighs> okay, let me preference this. So a report comes out, Henry Cavill, apparently not coming back. Uh, his manager comes out and says, no, he, the Cape is still on his thing, but sometimes they don't know. You know what I mean? Sometimes the yeah. CEO has different thoughts. So, And it's official. He's not. And, uh, it's right. not official, technically. It's not? It's not official. No, nothing's but been it, official. Nothing's come out. But Because Warner uh, Brothers said, we have a great relationship with them, blah, blah, blah. They didn't actually address the thing. So it, it's they a, need to... there's no official stuff from Warner Brothers. They're tiptoeing around it just like Bad and Affleck leaving. They're just tiptoeing around it. Well, this their my PR thought. people need to. Their PR is crap. The whole universe is crap. At this point in time, because this all started because he was supposed to do a cameo in Shazam because Shazam looks up to Superman. That didn't work out. I don't blame him because I don't think he wanted to do a cameo. Why why would you want to do a cameo? You were Superman. You deserve your own movie. So I don't blame him. Here here are my thoughts. Henry Cavill leaving, that's fine. I, I, I don't want him to leave, but I don't blame him. The, the guy got one movie that I think is fantastic and deserved a sequel. No one else. D- d- don't, don't give him a sequel. He was one of the best shining parts of Justice League who outperformed his damn mustache showing. He was d- d- horribly used in Batman v Superman. Yep. And he he's was- one of the best actors. After Mission Impossible Fallout, your your main thing that you should have been doing is we need to get a man of Stu- steel 2 involved because one of the best parts of Fallout was him. Yeah, one I of would argue of Man from Uncle was him, and now he's signed on to the Witcher series for Netflix, which is going to take about a year of his life to finish. Which, good God, thank God, uh, The Witcher is one of the best video games I've ever played. That third game is phenomenal, Cody. I know you probably have not played it. You nope. need to play it. Like, make that be your next game you play because it is so damn good. The universe, the world, all of it, it is amazing, and he is perfectly casted in there as Ger- Geralt of Rivia. It is superb, but I do not blame him. I do not blame him for leaving. They are not using his character right. They are not using him at all right. He deserves better. He should come out of that contract, and I'm going to laugh my ass off when MCU snaps him up and put him puts him in as Captain Britain. Yeah, you know, that... <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious? It's like, gonna happen. What if it's I like, guarantee it'll happen. What if it's like a complete swap? Like Warner Brothers and DC, they snatch up James Gunn, and then Marvel and Kevin Feige, they snatch up Henry Cavill, and we get both awesome things on either side. But uh, honestly, it's just oh geez. Warner Brothers has such a PR nightmare when it comes to DC. I mean, it's ridiculous, all this stuff they're going through. The thing that I'm so happy about is the fact that Henry Henry Cavill, he, he's, he's taking all of this like a champ. He's literally... I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot of emotions that are going through his mind right now, but the way he's portraying it, he is taking it like a downright champ. The guy is amazing. And yeah, Mission Impossible Fallout, He w- besides the action... If there's one thing I would say would steal the action scenes away from the movie, it was Henry Cavill's performance. Because although the action scenes were the star of the movie, in my opinion, the actual best part of the movie, as far as performances go, that was Henry Cavill for me. Because it's just a performance nobody was ever expecting out of him. No, and it, again, it goes to... A lot of it goes to that universe. That's crap. They've gotten phenomenal actors in there. You got Ben Affleck, who for me is my favorite Batman. You got Jason Momoa as Aquaman. You have Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, which is the biggest controversial thing ever, except Ben Affleck. That was pretty bad, too. But you have that, and she was phenomenal. Ezra Miller, a lot of people are kind of wishy-washy on him as Flash. I think he's a great actor. I think if they give him more material, he'll do great. Ray Fisher, who is probably the best actor out of all of them. He does Broadway. You get him as Cyborg. 
you have a phenomenal lineup. You have this great world. And right oh, now, and Jer Jeremy Irons is Alfred. That was a great choice. Yeah, you know, it just goes to me, and I would sit here and I preference this. Warner Brothers. Actually, let me write this out. Dear Warner Brothers, listen, your universe is crap. I'm sorry. I've enjoyed most of them, to be honest, but they're nothing that I should love. I wish I could. I wish I could love them. I love Man of Steel. I really like Wonder Woman. And I really enjoyed Batman v Superman for the most part. Justice League is a mess, but I enjoy it. And Suicide Squad is shit. Listen, Warner Brothers, please, come on. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Get someone in fucking charge. I get it. You ha you brought over the guy who's in charge of the Conjuring universe and Pennywise. That that's a great start. Let him do what he wants to do. Maybe this is him doing what he wants to do. Get Henry Cavill out. But at this point in time, just restart your universe. You Flashpoint. you have three, you have th not even Flashpoint. You have three things you can do here. Restart your universe completely after sh after Shazam. Just make Shazam the new start for this universe. Sorry, that's it. Don't make references to Wonder Woman. Don't make references to Aquaman. Shazam starts it out. Second, just continue. Do solo films. Make them good. Then tie them all in later on. Or three, after Wonder Woman, just restart completely. Make uh, Matt Reeves Batman the new start of the universe and go from there. Keep Stop Gelby trying to. No, don't keep any of the actors. Just reset them. Really? Okay. Yeah, those, there's three things you can do. Because if you're going to reset the whole universe, why why keep Gal Gadot? Why, why keep Zachary Levi? Like, that's what I'm saying. If you're going to restart it, point. you should just start it with Shazam. But it looks like Shazam's already tying in. So it, you're kind of screwed in that part unless you go back for extensive reshoots, which I doubt they're really going to do. Aquaman, you know, it, yeah, I want all these actors to come back. But the thing is, is at this point, your universe is crap. And then, yeah, you said Flashpoint, but for me, why do a whole film to just reboot your franchise? Yeah, X-Men Days of Future Past did that, but they already had some pretty damn good films in their lineup. They just made two really bad ones that really destroyed the universe. I, I, I think Flashpoint would be a waste to do. And the thing is, is Flashpoint doesn't necessarily, like, it doesn't change your actor's face. Just recast them. It, it, it's simple. It's like the James Bond role. Just recast him. The audience is not that stupid. Oh, this guy's Batman now? Cool. Oh, this guy's Superman? Cool. Same universe. Awesome. It's not that hard, yeah. to be honest. It's not. It's not. It's like when you cast Reed Wolverine, sorry, they're just going to throw him in. They're not going to do a uh, Flashpoint or anything to be like, oh, Hugh Jackman's on him, so we're going to Flashpoint this to, oh, it's uh, Taron Egerton. It, 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 the whole universe is crap. They need to sit down. They need to come up with a definitive plan, and the best thing they can do just come out with a definitive plan. Have a press conference. Be like, this is what we're sticking to. This is how the universe is going to go. And we're going to continue it through on this out. We don't need Michael B. Jordan being Superman, which I'm not being racist when I say that. I'm not like, I'm not. I, I just, I don't care what Superman's skin color is. He can be white or black. He can be Asian for all I care. As long as the actor's great. But Michael B. Jordan just doesn't fit in. I'd personally rather him do other things. That That's just, let's be honest there. He, he's already done Killmonger. He's already killed in the comic book world. Let him do other things. <sighs> but Warner Brothers, please. Please, please, please. Just, there's literally, you have four things, but out of those three, there's three that are perfect. Just be smart. Which they're not. In the end, I guarantee after Wonder Woman, they're just going to reset the universe, which is stupid. Yeah, well, let, let's look. I mean, let's just look at it this way let's look just to how much of a track record warner brothers has with their dc universe let's look at the reactionary attitudes and comments and press releases and articles they release let's look at oh guess what everybody likes suicide squad let's do a harley quinn and joker movie let's well, do another issue they're doing is, why why are we doing all these spin-offs why why is suicide squad 2 so far in development why? I, I guarantee it comes out. I ain't going to do that good. Because the first one was horribly received. Or it's just not going to happen. D on, dude, they have a director. They have the cast. And the script just got finished. Are you kidding me? But we can't get Batman made. Batman should have already been out by now. And, and did you hear how 
some who does like all the like um he does like some of the story structures and stuff he does a lot of it for batman he said ben affleck's script was the best script he's ever read for a batman film this is a guy who has worked on the dark knight batman begins other animated batman features and he comes out and says that and yeah well then again ben affleck doesn't want to be batman doesn't matter he, i wouldn't want to be batman either think, just think about keep it. his script though yeah no, no no think about it think about it think about it they kick him off as director they take yep. your script and chop it up. They put you in Justice League. They promise you all this stuff, and they make a horrible universe. There's no mm. structure to these films. There's no structure to this universe. There's tons of issues with the universe in general. And and at the end of the day, it's just that the franchise is going downhill. They have to gain control back. Shazam is probably my most anticipated film of next year, and I hope it's good. I, it'll break my heart if it's not good. I hope Aquaman's good. I mean, I, they've got... I think I don't it'll be know. good. I think it'll be good, but it's a film that should be great. I mean, in a sense, these we shouldn't even the films. I, I get it. Films really hard to make, but we shouldn't even be having this discussion about Warner Brothers right now. No, but and we are there. It's like a ship that's sinking, but they're still trying to make it float. Yeah, you and, know there is. Yeah, no. there is the possibility of the complete lake stream. Which is the fact that after Wonder Woman 2, they scrap it, but they don't reboot it. There's also that extreme. What do you mean they don't the, reboot it? Well, what I mean is this, is there's the possibility that at a certain point, people will not go see DCEU films anymore because they're just so sick and tired of this stuff. Um, I don't think so. I think it depends on how it's critically received. Um, because if you really think about it, Wonder Woman got great reviews, did great at the box office. Justice League got bad reviews, didn't do great. People look at the audience. People look at the reviews, even though people are like, oh, crit people don't care about. Yes, they do. People care about critics reviews. That That's just the truth. It's it's people want to know if their time is if it's worth it. I would have never seen Mandy. I, I'm, I'm being honest. I would have never seen Mandy if it wasn't for the reviews. It has a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a two okay. hour and one minute film by Nicola, with Nicolas Cage. 98%. There's something I have to see there. It's not for everyone. But again, it goes to, people do watch the reviews and or read reviews and whatnot. And that's one of my things. This is a film that given there's some film there's some films where like the nun. The whole franchise has been pretty much good. The reason the nun did so well, because everyone likes the conjuring. All if right. Man of Steel was fantastic, uh, I think it is. But if everyone thought it was fantastic, if Batman v Superman was fantastic, if Suicide Squad was the one that kind of was the Annabelle of the franchise, but then they came back and had Wonder Woman, Justice League would have made over a billion dollars. The thing is, is these films now succeed off reviews. If Aquaman gets middle of the road reviews, it's going to get middle of the road box office. If Shazam so. gets good middle of the road, same thing. Okay, so I gotta ask. Opening weekend predictions, how much do you think Aquaman is going to make? Judging based on based on Justice League last year. It'll make more than Justice League opening weekend. You think so? Yes. Because what Justice League only made what, like sixty? Yeah. <laughs> I'll look that up right now. I'll look it up right now. Um yeah, what's yours no. though? What's yours? Uh, my prediction, I think it will make more than Justice League. Because Justice League made what? 657 worldwide. Jeez, how much did it make opening weekend? Because I think you're right. I think... 93 million, 93 million. Okay, well, I I do not think... That's I don't still know... really bad. That's still horrible. Honestly, when it comes to Aquaman, I think it is going to do a little bit below there, but maybe a little bit above. So I, I'm thinking it's going to go somewhere between 80 and 100 million opening weekend. Can week. I say this? I think if it gets good reviews... Just good, just good. Eighty-five to ninety gets us raving like Wonder Woman type reviews. Hundred and twenty million opening weekend. Yeah, it gets sixty-five. <laughs> sixty-five gets... to seventy opening weekend. If it's just okay, if it's bad reviews, um, I I say this because everyone loves Jason Momoa. It's James sure. Wan. The trailer's awesome. But yeah, I man, I'm scared. I'm scared. yeah, me too. Plus, 
man, I'm more scared because that same damn day you have Alita Battle Angel, Bumblebee, and Spider-Man come out the same fucking day. Wait, they, really? Um, yes, all th- all four of those films come out either that same day or that same week. Jeez. Stupid. Dumb. Dumb. Aquaman needs... I Aquaman should be moved up. I'm sorry. It, it should be moved up. It No reason it should be going against all those films. Yeah. But... <sighs> Uh, I think we're both just really, really nervous and sick and tired of having this conversation when it comes to the DCEU. Yeah, so, but let's move on to a more fun part before we get going. We're going to debate something, because people really like when me and Cody debated uh, Jurassic World versus what, Han Solo, (laughs) right? Yeah, they did. So, me and Cody are going to debate Kevin Hart's best film, or best performance, whatever you want to say. Best performance? Whatever. Okay. So, what is Kevin... What is your favorite Kevin Hart film that you're um, in? My favorite Kevin Hart film is Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. I knew you were going to pick that one. Mine that is one. Think Like a Man, the first one. Okay. Okay, that's a good choice. I'll let, you, I'll let you start first. Okay, now, wait. What are the terms of the debate? Are we just arguing Kevin you're, Hart specifically? You're, ar- you're arguing in general. Why it's his best film? Oh. Why does he give a good performance? Blah, 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 blah. Because okay, you can of, pretty much we're, we're not deciding who wins. The audience is going to decide on this. Okay, one. so first of all, why why is this movie Kevin Hart's best film? First of all, it's an insanely fun film. It's an insanely enjoyable film because of it does what Kevin Hart does best, and that is make the audience roar with laughter. Is Kevin Hart great in it? Yes, he is. He does what Kevin Hart does best, and that's play off of his size, play off of his sense of humor. Oh, yeah, and the chemistry between him and Dwayne The Rock Johnson is some of the best chemistry. It's like real-world chemistry those two have because those are the kind of jokes and humor that they play off of each other. Can I butt in real fast? Can I butt in real fast? You said he was funny. He's funny, but really the reason Jumanji's funny is because of Jack Black. Let's be honest there. Yeah, you know what? You could say the thing about Tropic Thunder, mentioning that Jack Black was the only funny part of the movie. But the fact of the matter is, everybody in Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, had Tropic and Thunder is a different story. Robert Downey Jr. still the movie. They were, everybody in Jumanji, Welcome everyone to the Jungle had a funny had moment. Their moment and Kevin they Hart were just played hilarious. himself. Kevin Hart just played himself. I didn't see a new character. Jack Black had to play a woman. Just saying. Well, l- let's go to my movie real fast. Think you know like what? a man. Think like a man. It's a rom com. This film is about four friends who conspire to turn the tables on their women when they discover the ladies have been using Steve Harvey's relationship advice against them. Let me tell you about this film. This movie's cheesy. It's awesome though. It has Kevin Hart. It has Michael Ely. It has Jerry Ferrara. It has Regina Hall. Taria P. Henson. I cannot pronounce any. Taraji P. Henson. Yeah, it has Chris Brown. Probably not the best thing to have in a rom-com. But let me just say, this film is adorable. It's a rom-com. Kevin Hart's this kind of suave man. And it's, yeah, it's cliche. It's cute, though, because you're thinking like a man. Michael Ely is one of the most beautiful men in Hollywood. I mean, this guy's like 45 years old, has the brightest blue eyes I've ever seen in a whole damn film. And let me tell you, Think Like a Man is cute. I, I remember I was dating this girl at the time. She's like, oh, this watch Think Like a Man. I'm like... I don't want to watch that. Like, and you why? did. And I did. And I was surprised. It has a fantastic soundtrack, fantastic score. And the screenplay is by David A. Newman, who in return has done other great films like Friends with Benefits with Justin Timberlake and Mila, Mila Kunis, which is a very underrated rom-com. Cody's giving me that face like, what the fuck are you talking about? But I know exactly like, what you're talking but about. But think like, like a man. Please. Also, let me tell you this. The director, Tim Story, who is responsible for making those horrible Fantastic Four films, directed this film and redeemed himself for me. This film is fun. It's enjoyable, and it's all it needs to be. And I'll go as far to say this. Kevin Hart gives a great performance in here. It's something that, yes, we've seen before from him, but he's just that advice man, that one guy in the group of friends that you're like, yeah, I get you. And each and every one of these guys has something different to them that bring a different sensibility to this. It's not like Jumanji, where Jumanji, while fun, isn't really a Jumanji film. Because, yeah, they're in the jungle, but it's not really a board game. It's a fucking video game. 
Jumanji yeah, one. It, it, no, no, no. Jumanji two. That's, that's because it, this, this, yeah, that's Jumanji because it transferred over to Cody, modern times. Cody, Cody, it's modern times, but it doesn't matter. Jumanji two just feels like another adventure in the jungle. Yeah, it has cool different effects and whatnot. And I love Jumanji two. It's so funny. Yada yada yada. But why is it funny? It's because of Jack Black. Kevin Hart's probably the weakest link in the whole film. That's really it. Um, he's kind of a pussy in the film, to be honest. And so uh, tell me, tell me, do you own Think Like a Man on Blu-ray? I do. I do. Oh, do you? Do yes. you? Is yes. it in a steel book? What? Is it in a steel book? No, and I don't have the steel book for Jumanji because I don't own Jumanji. Really? Fuck you, yeah. <laughs> I own the original Jumanji on 4K because that's the best way to own it. And that still is the best Jumanji film because it carries Robin Williams in it. Nothing can beat that. You've already lost right when you said Jumanji too because nothing yeah, will ever know, beat Robin Williams. You know, or, or you, I know. Will, here, here's the thing. I will admit this I lost. This came out in 2012. And you want to know what made more money? I Think like a man. It fixed its box office better because it costs less to make. So that's even better. Oh, wait a minute. So a movie that makes money automatically makes it a good movie, a.k.a. Yes. Transformers The Last Night is a good movie because it had good box <laughs> office. <Guilty pleasure. laughs> hey, think about this. Think like a man made $91 million at the domestic box office on a production budget of $12 million. I win. No, you know why you win? And here's a big secret. The reason why you win is not for any of the crap you just spewed out. It's because I have never seen Think Like a Man. <laughs> yes, that means I win. That's the reason why you win. Because <laughs> well, I well, Cody, never... Cody, I'll say that. Uh, Cody, I'll say this. Think Like a Man's a good film. It's cute. It, it It's cute. I like it. It's a really nice little rom-com that I felt like was very underrated. Okay, I'm going to have to check it out then. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, so you're saying I win? Yes, I will admit defeat because I haven't seen that movie, so I can't really argue points. Okay, so everyone heard I won. Okay, I'll be honest, Jumanji should win because it's not that good of a movie. <laughs> it has a 54% on Rotten Tomatoes. It, but honestly, it is enjoyable. It's like a guilty pleasure of mine. I, I enjoy it. It's cute. It's one of those films that's worth watching. Um, but yeah, that was fun. That was a nice little debate little harder to debate but of course we debated that because night school does come out next weekend and we're looking forward to that film. i am i am i love tiffany haddish i don't know about you are you looking forward to night school i am looking forward to night school so i'm in i'm interested though because honestly this is i feel like this is going to be a comedy with tiffany hash and kevin hart i feel like i might come out of it saying i wish that had been rated r but yeah we'll it's see. pg-13 so like it's PG -13. i don't know we'll, so see, I guess but... we'll see but guys thank you guys so much for watching the sweet film podcast let us know your thoughts henry cavill leaving michael b jordan walking phoenix mary poppins so much things we talked about and what were your thoughts on the predator but most importantly what do you guys want me and cody to debate next let's talk about it down below tell us what you guys want us to debate on the next episode of this um yeah there's gonna be a lot that we can debate later on this year yeah, definitely. So, Without a doubt. If you feel like Cody was in the right, let's comment down him. Tell say Cody wins. Hashtag Cody says fuck twenty eighteen. Um, that's always gonna be the motto until we get him to say it on this podcast. But Cody, where can they find you before you like get going? All right, guys. Well, as always, you can always find me here on the Sweet Film Podcast with Zach. You can find me co-hosting our show Entertainment Wars. You can also find me doing various projects on here, collaborations, all that good stuff. But if you want to contact me personally. Go to YouTube, search Cody Curtis, should be the first name that pops up. Also, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, all of those good places by just searching either underscore Cody underscore Curtis or just Cody Curtis. Awesome. Well, guys, that's where you guys can find this beautiful man. You guys can find me on this YouTube channel at Zach Pope or over at Sandwich Island Films. Of course, Cody's done some reviews over there, which is pretty cool. Tons of great stuff coming down the road on this channel, so make sure not to miss out on it. Tons of sweet film podcasts. And, of course, me and Cody do have something to announce about the Sweet Film Podcast. It's a new segment that we will be bringing where the first two competitors being Ryan O'Toole and Jay Vader's. We don't exactly know when this will debut. We're probably hoping around October, right? probably yeah. sometime in october yeah, yeah, oh, we're yeah, gonna yeah. try and do september but it's gonna be a little bit hard because me and cody got to put it all together and september's almost over and we kind of and plus that part. we've got about a million other projects before then yeah so but it is called sweet film 
trivia. It's going to be a little trivia show where me and Cody are given one-off questions to two competitors. This will be a blast. We're all going to do it on this podcast. So guys, make sure to look out for that. If you guys want to be a part of it, show us your movie trivia knowledge. And of course, maybe we'll get you on here. But yeah, maybe let's see. I'm going to say maybe the second week of October is where we're going to try and plan for that. All right. Um, just let's because Venom, Venom's the first week and we're probably going to want to talk about Venom. <laughs> We're probably also going to want to talk, let's see here, about First Man, about Bad Times at the El Royale. About- uh, did you know those are all, um, what's it called, uh, limited release, so they won't come out till later. I just found out Bad Times at the El Royale is limited release. I, I was so happy that it was coming out the 5th, and then I was like, oh no, it's limited, so I won't. So we're not getting it until the 12th. Or is a possibility that First Man's going to be released in IMAX. Yeah, dude, I was this close, though. Because, oh, real fast, by the time that the El Royale is premiering at Fantastic Fest in Texas, this close to driving out there that weekend. Really? I was, it. I was this close to buying my ticket. I was like, for one movie, is it really worth it when I'm, like, I'll probably just end up seeing it in, like, two weeks. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, absolutely. I don't know. I'm really excited for that movie. I can't wait. But, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. So, of course, until next time, stay classy.